Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Doki Doki Literature Club. Now where we last left off, I joined the Literature Club, and I wrote a poem, and I'm showing it to people. I first showed it to Yuri, and now I'm going to show it to Sayori. This is a good poem, Neo. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Oh, come on. Yuri said it was exceptional. You can be honest. It got Yuri's stamp of approval. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest... I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Well, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Neo. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Try new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Or people that just get roped into things. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if I if I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again. I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you the way you uh, glow through my bl blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you, too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. What do you want for breakfast? Sayori. This is a guest, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! D just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Thank you, Neo. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. <laughs> I made eggs and toast. Mystery solved. Now there's no fun in trying to figure out the last line of the poem anymore. Oh well. Even though you were late to school, bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monka's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. I'm gonna hold you to that. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. 
All right, Natsuki, you're up. Neo, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. Fuck you, I put a lot of thought into this. Wh what? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? Well, clearly you are. I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put effort in it. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Got you there. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. How? How am I supposed to know what to improve if you don't tell me? That's very counterintuitive. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Hey, the music changed. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Bit of a mis mis bit of a misanthrope, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't take even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write a po so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. True. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that and didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah. Guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Last but not least, Monica. What do you think of my poem? Hi, Neo. Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring them up, okay? Th things up, okay? Oh, sweet. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. Coward! I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> 
Don't worry, Neo. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. If you guys hear thunder in the background, that's because it is currently storming outside. So I apologize for that if you if it bothers you any. Then again, I can't really help the weather now, can I? Mm-hmm. Great job, Neo. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. Never underestimate a rock. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike, unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write that like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll, I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to f find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> Why do I feel insulted? <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? True enough. I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh, we can scroll. Hole in the wall. Hole in, sorry, hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See, the direction the speckles protrudes, a noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. A little bit on the meta side, I th see. Or, you know, the outside looking in kind of perspective. I guess there's a little bit of that too. I th at least I think. I, I'm not sure if I. I'm not really just. I think I get it, but I'm not sure I'm describing it accurately. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very. freeform, if that's what you call it. 
Sorry, I'm not really the right per person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I kind of had, I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah. Something like that. Well, what is it? Tell me. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper, and tidy up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. <laughs> it's actually pretty good advice. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I had anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. I don't think she approves, Natsuki. What's this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is... Cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Really? I thought it was... Really? I thought you could look into it as just... Well, you know. The hum humanity's constant s struggle in trying shit. Like, it doesn't have to be a depressing thing. It could be admirable. We keep fucking things up, but we're always trying our best. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Well, hey, come on, Natsuki. I mean, sometimes some of the best suggestions, advice, slash criticism can come from people who don't like what you make. I mean, you gotta listen to criticisms, even from people who may not necessarily like what you did, if you really want to improve. You gotta listen to all feedback. Which people which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. 
and Neo did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. Don't, I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <laughs> and Neo liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Brace yourself, Neo. You're probably going to get an eraser thrown at your head. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, eh? That's not what I... Uh... You... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Neo appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself... I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh. Oh, she hit below the belt. Um... Is everyone okay? Hardly. Everything is going horribly. Well, you know what? I wasn't one whose, whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Neo started showing up. N Natsuki! Um, now we're hitting above the belt. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting, guys. Oh boy. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me, as if they noticed I was standing there. I would run. Neo, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Maybe you're both right, ladies? I mean, there's strengths and there's pros and cons to both writing styles. I mean, one doesn't have to be sub objectively better than the other if object if this sort of thing can have any sort of objectivism to it. I mean, it's writing. A lot of things are subjective, but come on, man, don't put don't put us in a bad spot here. Me and Neo. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The means should just jump out, jump out the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Come on, where's the fun in not having everything spelled out for you? Help me explain that to her, Neo. Come on, it, it depends on the story. If, like, mystery wouldn't be fun if you have everything spelled out for you. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Neo? Yeah, I understand that perfectly. Um well, uh how did I get dragged into this in the first place? You stood there looking like an idiot. That's how you got dragged into it. It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course that's gotta be... <laughs> Help me, Sayori! Well, the thing is, I don't think... I mean, you're both not, you're, neither of you are wrong. I mean, it just depends on the context and the type of story. Um, uh, um, ah, uh, screw it. Help me! The Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, 
drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turned to Yuri. Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Neo. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. Some friend you are. Uh, I agree. Not you too, Yuri. I thought you were the nice one. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Natsuki! Yuri! You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Feel bad, you two. Feel real bad. You're making the waterworks flow. Natsuki's poems... They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you, Sa Sayori! You get it! You get my- what- the- you get- you just get it! Thank you. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because... Well... Also... Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. Hell yeah. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> Can't believe you just said that sort of thing out loud. <laughs> Sayori. Oh, sorry. I thought that was Yuri. <laughs> Sayori stands triumphantly. Mahaka stands behind her with a bewildered expression. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just... That was just amusing to me. It, it, as if you guys probably couldn't already tell. <laughs> I'll... Make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. Careful, you Natsuki. If you stare into the void for too long, the void just might stare back. So, this is why this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good at people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> eh, everybody makes mistakes. Nah, it's not that I, like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. Maybe she's faking it. Maybe it's like I speculated in the last ep episode. She's actually uh, she's actually an evil mastermind planning to poison me with poison cupcakes. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I will. Other Neo, on the other hand, I don't trust him. I would hate to see her. I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. 
You can count on me. Monkai smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Neo, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat it was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Poems again? And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Neo! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. See, I knew you did like her deep down. You just need to spend more time with her. Coward. Sayori. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki, does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't hate them, do you? I would... Okay, they got passionate. They got pretty passionate about their opinions on writing and all that. That's hardly anything... That's hardly any reason to hate them. No, I don't hate them. I just want your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Neo, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayori, is, Sayori still hasn't caught on to, on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Thinking, thinking all the way towards, uh... Actually, no, I'm not sure about what I was about to uh, start talking about, so... Never mind. We'll just have to wait. We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I say that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Did she consent to being your internal monologue, Neo? Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay, we are here with the poem again. Uh, I wonder. I'm seeing a couple. I'm seeing a couple words here I've already seen before. Can I use the same words again without any consequence? Okay. So. Essence. So yeah, you like symbolic words, stuff that you can draw your own meaning from, and stuff like that, Yuri. So. Philosophy. Um, 
Ambient. Okay. Uh, Inferno, Unending. Unending. Okay. Friends, music. Precious. Okay, that didn't go well, but... Sorry, sorry, I'm not trying to appeal to your tastes. Um... Daydream? No. I... Okay. Incongruent? Okay. Secretive. Termination. Okay. Comfort, sadness, tone, heaven sent. Ah, crap. I did it again. Click, double clicked somehow. Whatever. Uh, sensation. Extraordinary? No. Okay, that was probably a little too obvious. Not quite symbolic enough. Uh, extreme. Hey, I clicked, double clicked two in a row for you. What was the one I, can I, uh, okay, no, I can't look at words I'd chosen before. Um, treasure. Nope. Effluent. Peaceful. Nope. Um, vivacious? Okay. Alright, I think I made another poem wor worthy of the Yuri stamp of approval, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope I'm right. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Neo. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. She's always in a good good mood, man. When is she not? <laughs> I'm just... Well, there was that argument for earlier. I'm, I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. It's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Oh, what's that about uh, it being important to not skip breakfast? Will you come with me to buy a snack? Then again, I don't know what time of day it is, so maybe you had breakfast and maybe it's like lunchtime or something. No thanks. Come on, go get a snack with her. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Oh yeah, and what reasons are that? What reasons you have here to not take like a literal minute or two of your time to go get a snack with her and then come back? Why don't you take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Oh, never mind. I guess that's a valid reason. Why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted you to look at it. Ah! Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Well, if I had some yen, I'd give it to you. I got a little bit. I uh, got a little bit of uh, foreign currency. If you want some of that, <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. 
If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so, that only leaves one option. Ah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Not necessarily! I mean, there is such a thing call as called undeserved guilt. That's just what an abuser would say, Neo. Are you an abuser? Who did you abuse? <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah! I, I wasn't listening in or anything. I was just... something in my book. Yuri... Tell Neo to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah! Did I just... I didn't mean that. Did you? I got too absorbed into my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to ex accept the revolution. Don't you mean resolution? Retribution. Well, that too. Then again, maybe I'm wrong, too. Oh, so yeah, we're both wrong, Sayori. You and me both. We can go have fun together in the wrongness corner. That. Still. Coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> oh, I think I skipped something. No, uh, actually, no, I didn't. Never mind. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. B but. You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me a little more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> uh... Kya! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. It's either an eraser, a piece of paper, or a pencil. Either way, I'm pretty sure the person who threw it is Natsuki. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie! Well... <laughs> that's certainly not, not what I was expecting. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Thank you, I was just about to say that. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I w it was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Well, at least I was right about it coming from Natsuki. N Natsuki? That's so nice of you. I'm so happy that <laughs> she wasn't doing it to be nice. S 
Sayori hugs the cookie. <laughs> okay. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. Oh boy, she poisoned it. No, wait. Actually, no. You're the one I'm suspecting wants to poison me with cupcakes. That's a cookie. She's probably just planning to poison us with cookies. I bit my tongue. Or there's that too. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. What flavor is the cookie that uh, Sayori has? I'll eat it. Or at least the part that, or at least the half of the cookie that uh, she hasn't bitten into. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Suddenly, sorry. <clears throat> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Thief! Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Hmm. That's interesting. Where is she? Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. So, she's late. Yeah, I haven't heard either. I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Boyfriend? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Don't sell yourselves short! <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sp speak of the president. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Called it. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend, after all. You're so strong-willed. Oh, I made that sound like a... Yeah, b boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the, the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. 
You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Neo. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean to put any. Pr I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. I be well. I'd be curious to see you play the Moonlight Sonata. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Uh... I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was just kind of waiting for you. Ah, uh, that's the case. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that, I can, that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watched her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really con contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long wet legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah. Why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm. Where are you two off to? Eh? We're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with, help, with helping involve Neo, involve Neo in club activities? Eh? I'm starting to get really unsure about you, Yuri. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hm. <laughs> then let's go, Neo. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. You know, you did mention about. I think it was you that mentioned about there being a little devil inside all of us, right? So I guess the question I'm now thinking about is, 
How prominent is the one inside of you? Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think... You did the right thing. I don't! I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Well... I... Ne Neo... How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. Uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. Yeah, but still, that was a bit of an overreaction. What kind of a friend would do that? Friend? You say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Neo. I really like... being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway... Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Neo, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'd only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the, the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Neo. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Neo, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Mm. Is that so? I wonder why that is. 
It's mo most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. You s you agreed to that rather quickly. Are you? Is that really it? Terrible reading posture? Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Hmm. Okay. Beside, the only other thing I can think of that would create back pain is, well... Yuri, no one's beating you, are, are, are they? No one's hitting you on the back? And you're just hiding it? I don't know why I jump. I don't know why I went and jumped to that kind of uh, train of logic, but well, I don't know. I can't think of any other reason besides just bad posture was why you'd have back back pain. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag. A bag. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it. Since it'll go well with since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit down against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. By how many millimeters? I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Actually, you know what? I think my uh, beating, my my uh, physical beating explanation earlier doesn't really doesn't really make sense in hindsight because if it was that kind of pain, then just pressing your back against the wall would probably hurt it even more, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably would. Holding it with my holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the, twin the teacup between my legs and fumbled with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well... I touch it, then I might get then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. Hey, we got some particle effects here. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. 
Well, in that case... Yuri is totally focused on reading again. I'm gonna save right here real quick. I wonder, can I... Okay, right-click does get rid of the dialog box. Good to know. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively put the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? You know, I notice her eyes keep changing. Like, they get duller and brighter. Oops. Uh, Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Yes, you took a bite of the chocolate, if that's what you're asking about. Um... Neo... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that... Friends do. Feed each other chocolate candies? Okay. <laughs> right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. What a dumb sentence. I mean, if that's what it does when you breathe in and out. It rises and falls to the rhythm of your breaths. I raise my arm. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Uh, ah. Yuri jolts back. Well, that's enough of that, I guess. It's time to share poems. Neo, you can help Yuri put the tea stuff, uh, put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Okay, so we're going to be sharing poems again. But I think I will go ahead and do that in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this uh, latest episode of uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. 
I am certainly enjoying the game so far. If you liked it and you want to see more content from me, you're free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys next time. Take care.